Hey guys, I'm Chris with Headlight Revolution. You can find us online at www.headlightrevolution.com. In this video, I'm going to teach you all about dual beam, also known as bi-xenon, HID conversion kits. More specifically, we're going to talk about the dual beam relay harness, what it is, how it works, and how to install it. I'm really excited to show you this kit by GTR Lighting because they have probably the best HID relay harness on the market for any HID conversion kit. It's a really awesome product and we're going to get to that in a minute. Before we explain the relay harness, so I need to explain why you need one. To do that, I need to teach you about a dual beam HID bulb. But before I do that, I want to teach you why a dual beam bulb operates the way it does. And to do that, I need to teach you the difference between single beam and dual beam halogen light bulbs that you find in your vehicle stock. These light bulbs are called halogen light bulbs, also called incandescent. Me they mean the same thing, and what that means is inside this glass tube, there's halogen gas. Inside the gas, there is a wire wound filament, and it's tuned to create a certain amount and color of light. When you energize it, the filament reaches incandescence and it glows. This is a single beam bulb, meaning this bulb creates one beam, either low beam or high beam. And this is a dual beam bulb with two filaments, and it creates dual beams, low beam and high beam in one light bulb. Back in the first HID conversion kit, they had a single beam HID bulb. One chamber inside filled with xenon gas and a mixture of metal salts that reacts to a high intensity arc discharge. And you can see one HID, one filament. Now, people with a dual beam type of light bulb said, well, we want HIDs too, but we don't want to lose our high beam. That's when the dual beam HID bulb was in invented. You can see it's got the same mounting collar as the original halogen light bulb, but it's significantly different in how it creates light. The incandescent light bulb has two filaments for low beam and high beam. The HID bulb has a moving apparatus that changes the position of the light output inside the housing closer or further away from the reflector bowl. With the traditional light bulb, when this filament is on, you get low beam, and when you change the position to this filament, you get high beam. With the HID bulb, when it's out, you get low beam, and when it's in, you get high beam. That little movement changing the position of the HID arc further or closer away inside the reflector gives you your low beam and your high beam. The way it functions is this is actually an electromagnet on the back. And when it's energized, it sucks the light bulb in and that's your high beam. Now all HID kits pretty much work the same. You have a ballast that powers a bulb. It connects this way. And you have one power input. Now on a single beam bulb, the ballast turns on and the bulb turns on and that's the end of the story. But on a dual beam bulb, how do you control the high-low function? The ballast turns on and it doesn't change at all. The way that we control the high-low function is with this little two-pin connector coming off the back of the housing. Now that's controlled by the relay harness. The way the relay harness works is you have these series of connections which are largely plug and play. It's actually a pretty simple install. First, you have the three pin connector that plugs into your factory wiring, whether it's 9004, 9007, H4, or H13. You have one output that goes to the bulb and ballast. You have another output that goes to the other bulb and ballast. As you can see, one is longer than the other. So the longer one goes further away from the battery. And lastly, we have a battery connection. So let's start with that. This has battery plus on it, and it has a fuse. This wire, this ring terminal, you connect to the positive battery terminal. Then you have the blue connector that actually looks like the same connector on your halogen light bulb. So this plugs into your factory headlight wiring um, where the original light bulb was. Lastly, we have two ballast outputs. The ballast plugs in right here. 
you ground the harness and this little two pin connector plugs into the bulb. So now what happens is when you turn the factory headlight wiring to low beam, this is not energized, but the ballast is. And then when you go to high beam, the ballast stays energized, so the bulb stays lit, and this two pin connector energizes and makes the electromagnet suck the bulb in. Now you have high beam. There are three parts to installing a relay harness. The first part is installing it, connecting it to the battery. Second part is connecting this harness to your factory vehicle headlight harness. And the third part is connecting it to the HID ballast and then to the bulb. What I usually do first when I'm installing one of these relay harnesses is I just lay it out over the front of the vehicle and I take the parts that I need at the moment. And the first thing I do is connect it to the battery. And in order to do that on this Dodge Ram, we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. We'll be able to connect right to the positive battery terminal. Once again, I'm using power tools just for the sake of the video to keep things short and sweet for you. But all of this can be done with hand tools with little to no issue. It'll just take a little bit longer. So there we have the battery terminal connected. Put that 10 millimeter nut back on there. Easy as that. You don't even have to remove the terminal, so you won't lose any radio settings or anything like that. Next, we need to run our headlight harness and our ballast harness down to the headlight area. And on this truck, it's really easy. You can go right in front of the fuse box and get all those connections down there with, with little hassle. On some vehicles, it's not as simple, but on this one, it is. Now you always have to find a place to mount this, this relay box itself for the relay harness. And you always want to mount it upright with this tab facing up. If you mount it downward, even though this is a pretty watertight connection, water can still get in there and it will corrode and, and cause that relay to fail. So on this vehicle, it's going to be pretty simple to just zip tie it to this existing factory harness here. That will keep it nice and dry right next to the factory fuse box, easy to service in the future should you ever have to. Now down in the headlight area itself, we have our factory connection here and our relay harness connection here. All you have to do is connect those two together. That's done. As you can see, there's a lot of room back here to just stuff wiring in. We're gonna zip tie all that up so it's nice and neat, but for this particular moment, we're not going to do that yet. So then all that's left to do is connect to our ballast and ground the harness itself. We're gonna be using the GTR lighting 55 watt ballast for this. Now, there's, there's two different ways to mount these. If you've got the room, and this truck certainly does, you could do a self-drilling screw anywhere here, this, this sheet metal. Uh, some guys zip tie them. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna zip tie it up just so it's out of my way. Uh, it's absolutely up to you where you put it. But being that I've got so much room back here, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie it. There we go, it's nice and out of the way. It's still protected by the elements. Now these connections here will be going to our bulb as well as this two pin high beam connector here. This goes to our ballast. This is from the relay harness. So we're just gonna connect that to the ballast. There we go. Make sure you hear that click. If it doesn't click, it's not in there all the way. Now all that's left to do is ground the harness. And on this truck, conveniently, we have two 10 millimeter fasteners down here that you can just remove. Go ahead and connect this terminal to, and it'll be perfect. You don't need to drill any new holes or anything like that. On installs like this, I really prefer to not punch holes unless I absolutely have to. And on this vehicle, that is absolutely possible. Now, if you're watching this, this video and you've got a vehicle different than this Dodge Ram and you do have to drill holes, 
it's not really a big deal. Try to find something that's, that's a relatively thin sheet metal. Use a self-drilling screw. And the most important thing to do is make sure that you at least paint it so that it doesn't rust on you. Now granted, if you're drilling holes into some sh uh, thin sheet metal like this and it does rust out a little bit, it's probably not gonna cause any real harm to the vehicle. But it's better to be safe than sorry. And rust also can corrode the connection and give you a bad ground. And that's the last thing you want. Make sure you get that nice and snug. And there you have it. You're ready to go ahead and connect your bulbs and your high beam itself. So I'll grab our headlight and just show you what those connections look like. The install is the exact opposite of what we just did. You've got a total of three 10 millimeter bolts, that little Phillips clip, and that's really all there is to it, which is pretty convenient. That's all there is to it. Now that the install is done, we hope that you understand a little more about the technology and how to do it step by step so you feel comfortable doing this install on your vehicle. If you have any questions, contact us. Our website's www.headlightrevolution.com. Please subscribe to our channel so you see other installs and reviews like this. And you can find us on Facebook and Google+. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.